Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making a delicious spiced apple pie with a brandied creme anglaise for my new book. I'm so excited to share this recipe, so let's get started. First off, we're making our brandied creme anglaise. Creme anglaise is a pourable custard. It's basically magic, and to make it, we're gonna have a third of a cup of sugar in the bowl, along with three egg yolks. The egg yolks are gonna give you the stability and richness you need. Whisk your egg yolks and sugar up. It comes together pretty quickly. You don't have to worry about beating it till it becomes light and fluffy or a beautiful light yellow color, just so combined. In a small saucepan, I'm gonna combine one and a half cups of half and half or three quarters of a cup of cream and three quarters of a cup of milk, <laughs> along with half a vanilla bean. You could also use vanilla bean paste or two teaspoons of vanilla extract instead of the bean. These are not the easiest to come by. There we go. I'm adding in my half a pod as well as those amazing beans into that half and half. And then this goes over medium heat until it's nice and steamy. It's not gonna come to a boil. You'll take it off heat before that. Now we have to temper our mixture. If I just pour hot milk into the egg yolks, they could curdle up and just be nasty. No, 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 we want them silky smooth. So we're gonna add the milk in very slowly, just a couple ladlefuls. Whisk, whisk, whisk. And right now what's happening is it's warming my egg yolks up and it's also thinning them out so I can pour this back into my warm half and half mixture. So now it's nice and thin and warmed up. Now we're placing this back onto medium heat and I'm gonna add my warmed yolk mixture right into the bowl, the pot. This gets stirred for three to five minutes until it's nice and thickened up. It's not gonna come to a boil though. If it's doing that, reduce the heat. And right now I'm leaving my vanilla pot in there. I'll scrape it down at the very end to get all the beans out, but some are getting worked out naturally and it looks amazing. It also smells so good too. Pouring custards just are not as popular as they should be in the States. So I'm working to make that happen and spread the word. These are delicious, port on anything. And you can back me up in the comments on that. At this point, I'm also gonna whisk in two tablespoons of apple brandy. I use apple brandy in the pie dough as well and it smells and tastes so good. The alcohol will cook down, so don't worry about that. And if you don't have apple brandy on hand, you could add a little bit more vanilla. You could use any other brandy or cognac that you love as well. Even bourbon. Mm. This is just starting to thicken up, so I'm gonna pull out that pod. Oh, there we go, I found it. <laughs> Before it gets too covered in custard. Okay, back to whisking. So if you see a wooden spoon dipped in here, it'll coat the back, not as thick as a normal custard or as a curd, but you can definitely see it. And if your custard broke, and you're about to cry, meaning it looks kind of curdled, don't. You could probably save it by using an immersion blender, whisking your heart out, or even just tapping it in a blender for a little bit. It's happened to me before. Scrape that pod and add the vanilla seeds, give it a mix, and now we're gonna pass this through a sieve and let it chill. There's a couple gnarly things in here, and maybe there's a little bit of milk or egg that got too hot. There's also any fibrous pieces from that vanilla pod. We wanna strain that out so this is nothing but silky smooth perfection. Pass it through your fine sieve. Oh my gosh, look at all that stuff. That was all of the vanilla seed pod. And you just don't want that pouring over your beautiful apple pie. Get that out there, chill until ready to serve. Now we're gonna start our pie dough. For the pie crust, I have a few surprises in store for you. One, there's cinnamon, there's also apple brandy mixed in. It's so packed with flavor. In a large bowl, add three and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour, that's 390 grams. This is a big double crust because we have a lot of decorations on this pie. Okay, I also want just two tablespoons of sugar, a tiny kiss of sweetness. Two teaspoons of cinnamon will give us so much flavor and I often love adding spices right into the pie crust. So if you're making a pumpkin pie at home and you wanna zazz it up, add some allspice, a little bit of cardamom and some cinnamon in, you're gonna be in heaven. Today we're keeping it nice and traditional with cinnamon. And to add some balance, I'm adding in half a teaspoon of kosher salt, there we go. Our scale is done and now we're gonna give this a quick whisk. This pie crust is all gonna come together in this bowl, so there's no food processor, there's no messy counter, just the bowl. 
Of course this pie crust needs butter. One cup or 226 grams to be specific. And it should be ice cold. That is not room temperature. You wanna cut this into smaller pieces. So just plop as you go. And I have to tell you, I've fallen in love with making pie crust by hand. You have so much control and you really just get the flakiest pie crust because you can have those big knobs of butter mixed in with all the little sandy pieces. So it gives you like a very good flake. As you toss your butter in, just give it a little bit of a mix so that the butter doesn't form a clumpy butter mountain. No, no, no. And now with your clean hands, you're gonna work the flour and the butter together. You wanna have pieces ranging from the size of almonds all the way to little pieces of sand. So it takes a couple minutes, but I really love doing it. It's so fun to just mush the butter in your fingers. You don't get time to just do tactile things throughout the day. It's very pleasant, trust me. <laughs> if you prefer, you could definitely use a pastry cutter just to get this butter worked in. I know a lot of us have hot hands and that makes the butter melt quickly. My hands are cold as ice, so it's perfect for this. If the butter is getting a bit warm, you can just pop it into the fridge or freezer for a little while and it'll firm right back up. This looks great. You can see I have a variety of pieces of butter mixed up in here. Some of them are big, some of them are tiny, and that's exactly what I want. Now for the liquid. I have a quarter cup of apple brandy here. It smells amazing and is really complementing the apple flavors in the pie. Using alcohol in a pie crust is a tried and true method to get your pie crust to be extra flaky. It'll bring the dough together, but it's not gonna activate the proteins in the flour and hydrate them. And of course, the alcohol will all burn off in the bake. To this quarter cup, I'm adding eight tablespoons or half a cup of ice water for a total of three quarters of a cup of liquid. Will I use my hands for this? Yes, I will. So I'm gonna drizzle this ice water apple brandy mixture in, sprinkle some stuff over it, and just move it around. You can use a fork or a knife to mix this in as well if you want. And what I'm looking for is a shaggy mixture that'll hold together when I squeeze it with my hand. It's not gonna be all the way together because it's an arrest and it'll happen in the fridge. All the liquid we're adding will seep and mix and make some magic happen. And I have to tell you, I am just so excited to be sharing recipes from my book. It's a dream come true, and I really got to include like all of my favorite recipes, things that have been passed down from my family, things that we love making. And there's also a ton of behind the scenes photos of the happenings here at Hedge Hill Farm, as well as the family, the animals, etc. This is coming together. I'm adding in the remaining liquid. So I'm gonna mix this together and I'm not kneading it. I don't wanna break the butter up too much, but I will be pressing and folding. So I'm gonna press it together, fold it over and press again. This is a cheating way of getting a flaky pie crust. You're gonna press and fold, press and fold and you're creating layers. It's almost like having a rough puff. So you have some lamination occurring, but it's all easy and in the bowl. Okay. This pie dough masterpiece is amazing, but it is unusable until you chill it. And half of it is gonna be for the crust on the bottom, and half of it will be for my extravaganza of leaves on top. So just cut it in half. All of that happened just from kneading this in the bowl and the folding we did. So that's gonna be amazing, very exciting. Plop your beautiful pie dough onto either plastic, I'm using waxed cloths today, and we're gonna wrap these up, and they're gonna chill for about two hours. You could also make this up to three days in advance though. But we'll be back with the magic of editing. While our pie dough is chilling, and actually, you can like chill it for just an hour, it'll be totally fine. Three hours is like very nice to have though. We're gonna make our filling, and we need three and a half pounds of apples for this. You can use any of your favorite apples, a combination of like a firmer apple and a softer apple will give you that wonderful play of textures. I love to use firmer apples though, so today I have Granny Smith and delicious Honeycrisp apples. Sweet and tart, it'll be amazing. But if you have Cortland, Macintosh, so many apples are gonna be really delicious in this. It's a celebration of fall, which is why it's in the fall chapter of my book. It has all those delicious spices and the apple flavors. It's quintessentially what I want in that season when all the trees are going to sleep and I have amber and red leaves 
gracefully falling in the wind. It's a magical time of year. The book is chock full of all my very most favorite recipes and they're all new too. So none of them have been on the channel or on the blog or anywhere else before. After you peel your apples, you wanna give them a core. If you don't have an apple core, a cannoli form will do. And if you don't have a cannoli form, then cut the flesh from the core. <laughs> Once your apples are cored, slice them into 1 8 inch slices, nice and thin. That way they'll all cook evenly and just be totally delicious. They'll also stack really well and you'll have a beautiful mound of apples topped with these pastry leaves. As you slice, just transfer these to a bowl. We'll be tossing them up in just a minute. Well, 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 my apples are all sliced and now we're gonna add a wonderful depth of flavor with the zest and juice of two mandarin oranges. If you don't have mandarins around, like any orange will work really, but these have a wonderful, super sweet flavor. And the orange with the apples and the spices really makes some autumnal magic happen. All that zest goes in, as well as the juice from my two mandarins. These guys are seedless, so sweet, and full of flavor. My grandfather had a mandarin orange tree in his backyard, and I would love to pick them, peel them, and eat them. They peel really nicely, too. And he had kumquats as well, so there's actually a bunch of kumquat recipes in the book because of him. This pie has all my favorite fall spices in it, starting with one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon, hmm, one and a half teaspoons of ground ginger, adds a little bit of heat, half a teaspoon of allspice. This one apple is getting all the spice on it, so I'm gonna toss a little bit as I go, just to give it a break and give some of the apples a chance. We'll toss it more and it'll get distributed, but it was getting crazy. A quarter teaspoon of cardamom, one of my all-time favorites, and definitely underutilized in the kitchen. A quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, I love grating my own, but the ground works just as well, kind of. I'm also adding in half a teaspoon of freshly cracked black pepper. This might seem a little bit odd, but the heat it gives is such a nice balance with the sweet and the spice. It's not gonna be a hot pie, it's just a little bit of something in the back of your throat that's nice. To balance all this out, we have half a cup of packed light brown sugar. And I like to mush it up in my hands just because there's always a little rock or two and they're impossible to whisk away. So break those up. And a half cup of granulated sugar as well. So here's the deal. All of this is delicious right now, but you wanna get as much of the water out of these apples as possible. If you have water in your apples, you're gonna have a soggy pie crust and it's not the pure concentrated flavor you want from a delicious apple pie. The sugar is gonna help pull the water out of the apples, but we need to give it some time. So we're gonna toss this, cover it, and just let it sit for one to three hours. You're gonna have lunch, you can go do some gardening, do some dishes, whatever you'd like, but when you come back, you'll see there's all this juice at the bottom, which we're gonna cook down and make into the most amazing apple caramel. And I will just say that I'm gently tossing my apples because I wanna have all those beautiful slices intact. Cover this up and set aside. Once your apples have relaxed in their delicious bath of spices and sugar, grab a pan and we're gonna do two things. Look at all that juice in there. That is a delicious drained apple situation. Pour all that delicious liquid into a medium pan Imagine if you hadn't done this, your apples would just be so full of water, you'd have a big soggy pie. Okay, this is gonna go onto medium heat right now and we're going to reduce it until it's thick and syrupy. It's gonna resemble and taste like a delicious apple caramel. Pop that on. While that warms up, I'm sprinkling a quarter cup plus two tablespoons, 45 grams, of tapioca flour right over my apples. Tapioca flour does the same thing as cornstarch, but it's a little bit prettier and the taste is even more subtle. So if you don't have tapioca flour, cornstarch works just fine. Sprinkle and toss, sprinkle and toss. This will thicken things up and really let those apples set. Because even though we drained a lot of juice out, they're still full of water and they just get kind of messy and soupy if you don't have a little bit of a thickening agent. Don't touch tapioca flour with your fingers. It's even worse than cornstarch. And by the way, if you want to see more recipes from the book, buy the book! No, I'm just kidding. 
Let me know in the comments. I'm happy to share more, but do go and get the book if you can. It's really a dream come true and I cannot wait for you to grab a copy and start making these recipes. This needs to get stirred occasionally, so just keep an eye on it. 15 minutes or so over medium heat, they'll be boiling away and we're just getting rid of even more water. So we wanna have nothing but concentrated flavor left over. This looks great, it's thick and syrupy. You can see that my wooden spoon leaves a trail when I drag it through. Take it off heat, set your oven to 425 and grab that pastry out of the fridge. I took my pie dough out, it's been on the counter for a couple minutes, sprinkling lightly with flour and I'm gonna be working on a pastry mat. It lets you lift things up, pop it back into the fridge. You can do anything and you will never worry about having anything stuck to your counter again. I'm gonna roll this out to about a quarter of an inch. Keep your pie dough moving. And this pie has an optional extravaganza of leaves on top. So we're going to roll the dough out, cut them out, and then repeat that for the next round of dough. That'll be the bottom. I love seeing these beautiful streaks of butter throughout. That is the hallmark of a flaky, delicious crust. Time to cut our leaves out, any leaves you like. This is my cutter, and I'm just gonna get to work. Pop your leaves onto a sheet of parchment paper as you go, and if you have a lot of leaves, just another sheet of parchment paper and more. <laughs> If you're not into the leaves or don't have a leaf cutter, you could totally just cut this into a lattice and make a lattice topped pie. It'll be equally as delicious. You just won't have this stunning panoply of leaves on top. No pressure. <laughs> okay. You can reroll the excess if you want and keep cutting. So I actually have this leaf cutter with ribs. I'm gonna use that just to press the ribs in. I love the way they look. But the leaf itself was not the right shape. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> These guys are gonna hang out in the freezer for about 15 minutes while we do the rest of the assembly and then we'll pop them back on. In you go. Roll the second piece of pie dough into a 14 inch circle. That's gonna go right into the base of our pie dish. Nice and easy. <laughs> Just add flour as needed, keep your dough moving, and you're not gonna have any problems at all. This looks great. Once again, giant streaks of butter throughout. So I'm gonna roll this onto my pin, the magic of a pastry mat, and plop that into my pie dish. Careful. I love this one as a vintage uh, of the next one, but the top is sharp, so it will cut your dough. If something's hanging off the edge, you can trim the excess. We're gonna fold the pie dough underneath, just like this, to create a beautiful edge. And now you can crimp however you'd like. I'm gonna try the twisty rope crimp. I've been munching on these apples. They are so good, oh my gosh. So anyways, you're gonna be adding your filling in, but I wouldn't just toss it in, I would keep those slices nice and flat. They'll look so beautiful when you cut this pie open and they'll bake really nicely as well. So just try and have as few gaps as possible and your apple mountain will be great. So, and the easiest way to do this is really just to use your fingers to arrange these apple slices. Add those last apple slices on and as you can see, I'm not being precious at all. I just don't want any big air gaps inside. Right now it's something of an apple mountain, but as it bakes, it'll compress down and be pretty flat. You do wanna gently press down just to kind of mush it together a little bit. And now we're going to grab this amazing syrup. Look how much it thickened up as it cooled. That's so pretty. This gets poured over the top and don't worry if it's just sitting in a layer, it'll seep in as it bakes and be amazing. Drizzle that caramel over the top I keep calling it a caramel, but really it's just a delicious apple syrup. Ooh. Yeah, it's totally not gonna stick right now. It'll be hovering on top of the apples, but as it bakes. <sighs> now for the fun part, we're gonna assemble all these beautiful leaves. Just pop them right on top. The caramel that you made is gonna help hold them together. And of course, we're gonna add an egg wash at the very end. You're basically making a little shingled roof out of these leaves and it is so fun, easy, and low stress. I love those lattice topped pies, but 
Sometimes things are warming up, you're moving them around, they're getting stuck in the filling, and it can be a little stressful. That looks so pretty already. I will say, if you have extra leaves, just bake them separately on a baking sheet. They need much less time, just a few minutes really, and you can serve those with the pie or have them as the most delicious chips ever to dip into your creme anglaise. Hmm. We're gonna cover this completely with an egg wash. It's just one egg that's been beaten up in a bowl. Very easy. My pie's ready to go into the oven, 425 for 15 minutes, then reduce to 375 and bake for about 50 to 60 minutes or until it's golden and bubbly. You can tent it at any time if you think it's taking on too much color. Here you go. Allow your pie to cool for at least two hours, then cut and serve with your chilled creme anglaise. That's a symphony of flavors, those caramel spiced apples with the creme anglaise and that cinnamon pastry. Oh my gosh. I hope you get a chance to try this recipe. Links to get your copy below. And if you like this video, check out my pie playlist.